Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to TowSports.com. I'm Rudy Baca, your play-by-play -play announcer, sitting alongside Jake Mosman, helping me here in the booth. Not much of a booth here, but what a great afternoon for some Division I soccer. We have the premier game for the Taos Echo Park Grand Opening, the New Mexico Lobos against the University of Denver Pioneers. And Jake, man, wow, I, th I've been waiting for this all day. Wow, this is great. Yeah, I've been waiting for this almost my whole life, <laughs> half of my life. So I'm really glad to be here. Uh, let me tell you, this game is the premier. Uh, again, this field here in particular, one of the uh, – Best fields in the country for high altitude training. It doesn't get any better than that. A two-star rating from FIFA, the International Soccer League, and this league is uh, doesn't give uh, this rating to any field in the country unless it's absolutely perfect. Jake, what do you think? Oh no, it's great. The uh, and the, remember the Lobos were just five years ago in the national championship game. So this is this is about as good a way as that you could kick it off. Our home team, half of the players are from New Mexico. Patrick Pacheco from Taos starting on our home field for the first game ever played um, of this level on it. It's wonderful. Couldn't be any better. Absolutely. And and, and as we mentioned, the Lobos, uh, last time out against the Denver Pioneers, they were ranked number one in the nation. Went up to Denver, took a game one to zero. And from then on, it was just nothing but success for the Lobos. As Jake mentioned, they were in the championship game against Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. You know, one, one zero finish on the penalty kick was a great game. And a tremendous year for the Lobos. And, and I'm sure that Coach Fishbein has his sights set on ending up their year every year. That's the goal. Yep, absolutely. And uh, bear with us today. We've got a little wind blowing from the west. So our microphones are going to be a little bit staticky, but just bear with us. Thank you for joining us here on TopSports.com. Rudy Bach and Jake Moss. We got the Denver Pioneers. We got the UNM Lobos. We got the grand opening of the Taos Echo Park here in beautiful Taos, New Mexico. Onto the field, we got the Denver Pioneers in white. We got the New Mexico Lobos in their traditional red and white uniforms. And as Jake mentioned, one of our hometown guys, Patrick Pacheco, on the field as a starter, man. Yeah, I had the. Um, I was very blessed to have the opportunity to coach Patrick. He's a wonderful kid, a beautiful person, great soccer player, and I can't imagine what he's feeling right now. You know, representing on this pitch here in in uh, beautiful Taos, New Mexico, his hometown. Absolutely, and let me tell you, here comes the Lobos onto the field, and these guys. Let me tell you, these are some real men out there on the field. You can see the height on, in some of the Denver players out in the in the center of the field right now as most of the Lobos uh, get ready to do some battle. They send back their their goalies uh, and respectively, here we go. Here's the kickoff. It'll be controlled by the Denver Pioneers as they get back to the midfield as they try to control the game early. And of course, back uh, for the uh, defenders uh, doing their thing, trying to bring it up, uh, taking their time and rotating that ball very nicely in the backfield. Here comes the first kick of the game. It'll goes all the way down. Controlled by the Lobos right now in the right side of the field it goes. And we continue to just toy around with it right now. The 31 seconds into the game thus far. We can't say enough about this Lobo team being ranked uh, in the top 25 in the past number of years. Last year were not ranked. The year before they were ranked 25th. And consequently, the years before that, number one, number two, number three, on and on and on it goes. Yeah. You can see how the Lobos, like, they're, they're drawing the, the Pioneers forward, trying to create some space. You can see that the Pioneers do not have their line, their offside line, draw, um, pulled very high so that their goalkeeper can help with the, the snuff the attack. And the Lobos are just playing the ball in the back, trying to draw them far, further out so there's more space behind them to play. One of the players, key players to keep an eye on is number 23 here, Blake Griffin. He's, um, uh, excuse me, Blake Smith. Uh, tremendous score scored in the Lobos last game. And Michael Green also scored in their last game. So those are two uh, very uh, potent attackers that we should keep our eye on. Absolutely, and of course for the Denver Pioneers at this point, having a free kick on the left side off a penalty off the Lobos, and I think that penalty 
uh, went against Justin Holmes, if we're not mistaken, and they're going to give a free kick out to the goalies. He can get this thing. He's got it down there on the box. He's going to put this thing in play for the Denver Pioneers. So there's the whistle, and we'll get play underway here. Very powerful leg in the goalies of these two clubs. Well Big header. Well wow. cleared into the space behind them. Let's see if um, Michael can get on the end of that. Well controlled by the goalie. So the good goalie has nice control in the backfield there for the Denver Pioneers. So here try to clear it out one more time and get this thing underway. Another um, uh, thing to watch is Patrick Pacheco, number 25, playing wide right in the midfield. Uh, historically, the Lobos like to play to their width. So 23 on this side, 25 on the other. Very key players in terms of creating width and space in the attack and giving us some room in the middle where we can finish our chances. And again, the Denver Pioneers backing it out to their goalie to clear this thing out. Lobos stepping up to press now, trying to press the action a little bit and force the turnover in the midfield. Ball is played into the middle, and the header is well played by the Pioneers, but won by the Lobos. So at this point, the Lobos on the attack right now, still back to the midfielders yeah, trying to... That's what I was talking about, the plan wide out to the right, overlapping run by the, the back to try and create some space in front of the goal for the, the forwards. And that ball is kicked out of bounds by the Lobos, goes over to the Pioneers, and the Pioneers will bring it in play. Bring it into play for the Pioneers is Josh Wren, and he'll bring it in with his hands. And a couple of headers there, a little action in the middle of the field. And the Pioneers back it way out, get it into Jack Henderson. Jack Henderson will back it out into uh, Drew Becky, and then all the way down as the Lobos uh, defenders back it out to the front. The Pioneers, there's the midfielders for the Lobos. This is an opportunity for the Lobos to use this ball here. They choose to wait and build the attack. Ball out to the left flank. Swinging to switch the attack to the right, right back. That movement from side to side creates a space in the middle and causes the uh, defense to lose uh, vision of the attacking players and creates good attacking opportunities. Excellent job by the Lobos to keep the ball moving side to side right now. So here comes the Lobos on the attack. They lose it to the Denver Pioneers and they take over. Uh, gets into the backfield now with the, some of the defenders as they ro rotate it out to the right side of the field. And then they bring it back the inside. For another turnover. There's a turnover, and here comes the Lobos on the attack. Michael Green, dangerous player. Blake Smith, cross, back post. <laughs> and that was a nice header. Nice yeah, nice attack. That was that's a good example of side to side movement. Ball to the left flank creates movement by the defense, and we play behind them for the uh, uh, shot opportunity. So the Lobos with a shot opportunity at this uh, early juncture in the game as five minutes have ticked away in this period. First period of play, Lobos and the Denver University Pioneers. The Lobos will get a corner kick. This is very dangerous as they try to get it in the middle into the box and try to get a header off a point. There it comes. There's the header. So the Lobos miss a grand opportunity there as usually those... Uh, Pretty much go in most of the time, Jake. Well, that was a, that was a well-struck ball. Um, in this kind of win, you don't want it to float. You want to drive it head high, and hopefully one of your players can get on to the end of that and hit that with some force towards the goal. Keeper did a really good job of his footwork there to be in the right spot. Absolutely, and here comes the Lobos again, uh, backing it up to the defenders so they can uh, do something with it. Uh, big kick up the right side again, as Jake has mentioned. They're trying to get that corner sort of stuff happening to open up the middle. That doesn't happen this time, but the pressure is still on in terms of defenders uh, for the uh, New Mexico Lobos. Uh, Denver Pioneers, uh, goalie ready to kick this thing out of there again, clear it up. Big kick here as this one goes, and back to the Lobos on the attack. As right they'll back. And they will be patient in their build, trying to draw the Pioneers out a little bit and create some space behind them that we can play. Great footwork here by the Lobos as they still go down the oh, right nice side. Ball. There's a kick. And that's going to go a little bit too far, and that will go out of bounds. Very, very typical of the Lobos attack. Swing it wide. Look for the long ball into what's called the channel space, just outside of the penalty area there, and then across to another runner into the middle. Uh, very
very, very typical of the Lobos attack. Uh, the, they will hold a very high line, meaning that their defense is willing to step way out and let the goalkeeper cover a lot more space uh, with his feet if he has to come out of the area to play the ball as a field player. So the Denver Pioneers put it back in play. This time it dribbles off and, and goes into these very potent players for the Lobos. They get it up to the right side again using that strategy as Jake has mentioned. Go to the middle of the field, nothing there, stolen away by the Pioneers. Nice step, nice step. And then back outside and that'll stay in bounds. It was a good tackle by Patrick Pacheco. It almost turned into a turnover with a shot opportunity. So now the ball goes out of bounds off the Pioneers and the Lobos will get it back here as they uh, will bring it in. Looks like Travis Campbell will get that opportunity. Now he gets it over to one of his teammates in Levy Rossi, and Levy will put it in play. Up forward, onto Devin Sandoval, and Devin loses out of bounds. Devin is another uh, New Mexico product, um, played on the same club team as Patrick Pacheco um, as a youth player. He went off to San Diego State um, and felt like he wanted to come home and uh, contribute to the Lobos, and we're glad to have him back. Absolutely. So now the ball bouncing around. That will go out of bounds off the hitter off the Denver Pioneers. So the Lobos will get it back. As 8-13 has expelled from this game. No score as of yet. The Lobos with a couple of opportunities at the net have missed. The Denver Pioneers yet to have an opportunity at scoring. It seems that the Lobos have managed to keep the ball on their side of the field uh, throughout the, the eight minutes being played, Jake. Yeah, neither team has really established possession very well and created much of a rhythm, but it's typical with teams that know each other so well. They're, they're conference opponents, they see each other twice a year in conference play, and they know each other's strengths and weaknesses very well. They'll be patient. This may, this could very well be a one nothing game. Every opportunity is big in a game like this. Absolutely. And there's a missed ball there. There's some nice dribbling going happening here. And backs it out a little bit. With and here comes a nice well played up the middle. Well played. He was called offside. So he was just off. A little impatient on the run. The timing wasn't quite there, but it was a great ball out of the back. Yep, it definitely was as offside. So they'll bring it back over to the other end. The Denver Pioneers will take over. That's why the Lobos are very patient with the ball in the back because they do want to draw the Pioneers out so they have that space where the goalkeeper isn't sure whether he can cover it or not and play into that space. That was almost perfect. Then. Yep, it sure was. It looked beautiful from our end. It was just a little offside. So here comes the play. That will go all the way back uh, and high off. And here's Devin. He gets it, passes it off to the left side. And here comes the Lobos, and it's kicked out of bounds by the Pioneers. They'll get another opportunity here with Blake Smith. And there's Devin. And he'll Smith will get it on the left side. Look at the fancy footwork he's losing there. Nicely done. And there's a pass, and it's a little bit too far forward. Patrick Pacheco stumbling Patrick. on that. Yeah. On that. And you can see the interchange of players. Uh, Patrick is playing right mid. He comes all the way to the left flank for that ball. The players will interchange to kind of try and confuse the defense and lose track of them as they're running through. So the Denver Pioneer goalie will try to clear this thing out one more time and get it on the other end of the gore here. And there's the kick. It's a deep one. And well won by the Lobos. Well done by the central defense. That's their job on those long balls. Nothing over the top is Fishbine's um, mantra on those balls. So they go up the right side again, trying to create some space. Jake has mentioned that as a header. Goes back out to the Lobos. Into Patrick. There's Patrick again. Uh, yep. Pass. Might be a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> I would think he would be. So here comes the Denver Pioneers clearing it out to the defenders. Lobos stepping to press. Now dropping back a bit to try and tighten up the space. And that goes out of bounds here by Blake Smith off his hands and the uh, Pioneers will get it back here. The referee backs him up just a little bit as Jack Henderson will bring it in with his hands. And there's Jack, sends it in. Well done by Javier to win the, uh, to win the throw in there. Ball still, possession still not clear. And then they get well it up done. forward. Well done by the Pioneers there. These are some big gentlemen out there on the field. They'll back it out and they'll go all the way back to the goalie. Clear yeah, the goalie out. can't pick that ball up. It was an intentional pass, so he has to play that with his feet. 
So here comes the Lobos again on the attack. Got well somebody done. in the midcourt. Into Patrick. And a great diagonal ball out. And there's it still in the front. There's some holding going on there. No penalty flag there. Uh, and there it calls is. It the, the referee in that situation in soccer, the referee has the option to wait and see if the advantage builds. If doesn't want to stop the play if the Lobos are going to get a, a good scoring opportunity. But that advantage did not develop. So then he blew the whistle. And we have an excellent opportunity off the free kick here right outside the penalty area. Exactly. So just outside of the big box will get a free kick. And apparently they're going to count on Devin Sandoval to do the honors. And let's see what he can create with this free kick from just beyond the second box. few options here. You can either play in to pass from this distance. A shot is much more likely than a, than a play designed for a, uh, a pass. Um, and the, the attacking players have to be very, very aware of the step by the defense to avoid the offside and also the rebound off the keeper. And there's a fake. Oh, and it was just a fake over off the top. <laughs> yeah, it was a fake off Devin and I think it looked like Blake Smith. Yeah, Blake Smith took the shot. It just didn't dip on that kind of ball. He wants to get it over the wall and then have it drop, and he just didn't have enough. I think maybe the wind affected it a bit. Yep. So the Denver Pioneer goalie will go ahead and bounce that thing out of there. It takes a lot of skill to make that ball dip right at the right time. And again, nice defense here on the low yeah. part. Well done by the defense to keep any balls from going over the top. There, you never want to let that ball over the top. There's Patrick Pacheco with a nice pass and then the shirt being held, but no, no penalty. You can see the familiarity between Devin and, and Patrick. As I said, they played for years on the same club team, uh, uh, the Red Star, and uh, it shows. You, yep. they, they understand each other very well out there. So now the Lobos will back it out to the defenders, and they'll try to make a uh, pass out here. Again, well, this nice, side. This nice build nice wood footwork there. He beats the second man through, sends a pass up front, a little bit too much. Four. I'm trying to win. Javier Gomez good back. And then go Excellent job by that. That's a left back. That's a long run. That's 80, 85 yards he just sprinted. Yeah, and it's not you're not going to be the last time he does it either. <laughs> <laughs> and that high altitude will take its toll after a while. The midfielders in a game of this level typically will cover five miles of sprints, starting and stopping sprints. So it's not like a it's not like a uh, easy three. Uh, 5k run out there. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the kick again by the Denver Pioneers. Once again, the Lobos, Lobos get up oh, and win that ball. And there's a whistle. Great job by the central defenders um, from New Mexico. Number 12, Kyle Ventner has been, been very strong in the air, winning almost every single ball in there. The Denver Pioneers quickly bring it in bounds. Looking to try to catch the Lobos unorganized. Off break, there. yep, exactly. And here comes the ball all the way back. And there's the kick by the goalie. Beautiful kick. Can win that. And they double him up and win that out. That was a good job by the forwards to get that ball back. Again, backing it up to the defenders and swinging, the, switching the point of attack from right to left and back to the right. Excellent ball out of oh, the back. Kyle Bender has pass. had, it, oh has my had a great game. Or, and it's a great few minutes here. I, I don't want to jinx him. <laughs> <laughs> So with 15 minutes in, uh, still no score. Lobos and Denver Pioneers. As the ball goes out of bounds, it will go over to the New Mexico Lobos. We'll get back on the offensive attack as they prepare. And they bring it in to Michael Green. And then Michael passes it off. And yeah. out of bounds again. The, the Lobos, the, the game start is sort of taking shape now. You can see the styles of the two teams. I think the Pioneer is a little more content to try and score off of the counter, something quick on a turnover, whereas the Lobos are a little bit more um, attack-minded, possession, longer balls into the into the opposite corners, long diagonal balls, trying to get behind the defense. So, so we have a little contrast in style. One, one team looking to press the action, and the other one trying to capitalize on the mistakes of the other team. And the Lobos again on the attack. Here they come across midfield. They have two players up front. Well done by Patrick. Well Pat done. Here comes Patrick. Passes it to the left side. And here comes again Blake Smith. 
Get some work. Got a shot to the inside. Over to Devin. Devin has an opportunity here. Then he backs it out. Uh, uh, bad turn. And bad pass it. for Devin. A uh, good job by the defender to get into that, though, and win that back and keep the ball on our side. Very well done. I, I guess I should quit saying our side. I'm supposed to be neutral in the, <laughs> the broadcaster, but I'm a lobo. I was I graduated from UNM. It's impossible for me not to say us. <laughs> as well as me. I'm a UNM graduate as well, and it's hard to, hard not to be uh, rooting here for the Lobos. I don't, want to, I don't want to be a homer, but, <laughs> but I guess I am. little home feel, little home cooking. Never hurt anybody, I suppose. So the Denver Pioneers trying to clear this ball out again. Again, the Lobos on the defensive Once end. Again, they win the long ball. That's that's been that's key to this game. Oh, good job by Javier. Good tackle, but one back by the Pioneers. Good good job by Javier to get over on that switch and slow the switch down. So at this point, the Denver Pioneers oh, with well one. Now this is something the Lobos can take advantage of. Oh, okay, here's Devin. Devin in the middle of the field, and he gets it off. They get it to the left side to Blake Smith. He wanted it. Oh, he tried to play right behind him there. That was just a little off. And there's Devin. He's got a run at the ball, and he just gets out of there. And a corner kick for the Lobos. So save there for the Pioneers was Theodore Riemann. He saves a scoring opportunity for Devin Sandoval. Short kick taken instead of playing the ball in. They're trying to draw the defense back out again and then play the ball, the second ball, into the middle. Didn't work out though. So here comes the Denver Pioneers on the attack, and this is a, a rare opportunity for them as they haven't had much to say on their side of the field as of yet, Jake. That's right. They Again, they're, they're a counterattacking team, it looks like right now, at least in this game, they're playing counterattack. Uh, and the Lobos did a great job of getting seven guys back ahead of the ball there and, and prepared to kind of stymie that counterattack. But the, the, when it becomes dangerous is when the numbers are even. It's like four on four, three on three, and that's a disadvantage for the defense. And it was a great job getting numbers back. And we want to apologize to you early on that we're having a lot of wind here in towns right now, so we're going to have a little bit of backbeat on our, our microphone. Just bear with us a little bit. But the game is fantastic if you're on the internet right now. You're witnessing something that is spectacular here in Towson. Two Division I schools going after it here in a hometown game for the Lobos as the Denver Pioneers and the New Mexico University Lobos. Technically, it's a neutral field, but I don't really think it is. <laughs> <laughs> not in New Mexico. It should, it's shouldn't not. be. <laughs> uh, and again, we have a branch college here of the University of New Mexico, UNM Town, so really happy and glad that that school is here, and Jake can't say enough about that. Yeah, I, I, I would be surprised if this didn't become an annual event here. Jer As I said, Jeremy loves Taos. We've had a long-standing relationship between our soccer programs. Uh, we have one of the hometown players on the Lobos teams. I would imagine that we'd get to see them, uh, if not annually, pretty often here. Absolutely. So now you the can't turn down a surface like this. I mean, you can't turn down the opportunity to play in this place. Yep. So the Denver Pioneers will get it a little past midfield on the, their end of the field as they'll bring it in play of player change. So out for the Denver Pioneers and a new player in for them. There's an opportunity, and that's over the goal. A deflection results in a corner kick opportunity for the Pioneers, and that. That's their, that's going to be their style, playing it in there. That time the forward was able to post up, win the first touch off the defender, and it resulted in their first shot. So you can kind of see where the difference in the, the styles comes to play there. So now corner kick for the Denver Pioneers as they get prepared oh, for this. Well and there it goes played. in, Great and that's a ball. score for the Denver Pioneers. That was the perfect kind of ball. He got head high, driven, so the wind doesn't affect it, and all it takes is a deflection. That's that's the danger with that counterattacking style. You don't have to have the ball much to score, and they didn't, and they did. <laughs> so the Denver Pioneers take the early lead here, midway through the first half, 21 minutes in, and the Denver Pioneers get it from a corner kick and get it just in the right spot, score the goal. 
both of the last uh, fall games ended up one nothing. So that's a huge goal in um, soccer. Almost always the first goal um, can determine the outcome. So let's hope that doesn't happen today, and that we see plenty of attacking by the Lobos, because it, you can you can bet that uh, Denver's going to tighten up the defense even more now that they have the lead. Absolutely. And the Denver Pioneers again on the attack ball in the midfield and they send it out back to the defenders up to the middle of the field now looking for an opportunity still defending it back it out a little bit trying to draw the defense there's some draw that's still looking at the backfield and here comes the attack go to the right side here try to clear it back out Lobos are trying to keep that that kind of ball from being played, that penetrating ball that splits the defense, and then the uh, Pioneers can use that to build their attack like they're doing right now. So the, the, the defense has to concentrate on keeping those split balls from being played out of the back and make them keep swinging it back and forth until they make a mistake. Hopefully the, the, we can win the ball on that mistake as the ball switches back and forth. So, a uh, couple of player changes ready to come into the game for the Lobos. As, nope, they decide to go ahead and put the ball in play. And here comes the attack for the Mexico Lobos as they back it out again, trying to draw the defense and they go to the right side. And here comes Javier Gomez and he goes upside and he's and offside, just out of bounds. So it'll go the other way. He had Blake Smith up front. And if he'd have stayed in bounds with that kick, it might have been an opportunity for Blake Smith. Yeah, Javier just kind of misjudged the speed of the, the weight on that pass. He was running a little bit faster than he thought. So here comes again. Oh, good turnover. Now let's, this is something that we can use. The numbers are pretty even up front. Let's see if we can use this ball here. Patrick carrying the ball. And then Patrick uh, will kick it out of bounds. A little miscommunication between him and Blake on that play. So again, the Denver Pioneers will bring it in. They'll get it into Zach Bolton, and then he attacks, and then he loses it, and it goes all the way to the other end. Travis Campbell with it off the right side. Travis will bring it up, gets it over to in the middle of the field with Michael Green, and then Michael sends it up here to Devin. Devin couldn't handle the pass. And then Pioneers clear it out. And then stolen away by the Lobos, and then well they'll backtrack. Well done by the defense again. And then, I didn't see that call. What was that there, Jake? Little push on the uh, clear, uh, bad turnover by the Lobos. This, yeah, this is perfect. Plays right into the Pioneer's strength here. With, um, but they're they're content to possess now a little bit more now that they have the lead. They'll be a lot more patient. Try and draw the Lobos out. Create some space behind them. So the Lobos right now uh, trailing here in this game with 24 minutes in, 1-0 in favor of Denver. And as Jake mentioned, one point could be the maker in this thing. Pioneers are showing their patience now, trying to, trying to create that space. You can see the Lobos are trying to keep the space tight in the middle here. That was a good ball. Um, split the defense well. Gives them a look, but you know, there's nothing there. The Lobos have good numbers back. So again, patient, takes the easy pass out. And here comes the Denver Pioneers on the attack. Again, they go to the right side. They'll go into Jack Anderson over here. And Jack will get it back out to Jack. Zach Bowden. Oh, and then Bowden tackle. loses it. Good and tackle. back to Javier Gomez. Javier up front. And he passes it over to Devin. Devin couldn't handle the pass. And there it's again blocked out. And then the Lobos will clear it out to the defenders. Travis Campbell on the right side and over to Michael Green. And then Travis will handle it. Travis Campbell all the way back. He'll get it to the goalie and then the goalie will probably kick it up here. Get it into the feet of Kyle Vetter. And Kyle will step it downfield. It's a deep kick. Looking for Pat out of the uh, out of the back. Uh, again, that's part of the very trademark of the Lobo attack. Uh, Jer Fish, uh, Jer Coach Jeremy Fishbein truly believes that his central defender should be able to deliver accurately that long diagonal pass. And we've seen it a number of times already. We just haven't gotten on the end of very many of them. So again, the Denver Pop
Pioneers will bring it in bounds. Uh, Devin with a steal now and goes out of bounds. And they'll give it to the Lobos. So the Lobos with an opportunity now way deep into Pioneer territory. And let's see if they can do something with it. Michael Green ready to bring this ball in for the Lobos. into the feet of Kyle Vetter and Kyle will send it up into the middle of the field and he will send it this way to Gomez. Gomez to the left side. He wants to get a pass from him. Doesn't get it. Gomez again and then back into the feet of Carlson and then there is the Blake Smith and Blake tries to come out of the back still with it and he gets tripped and there's the penalty. Excellent scale by Blake Smith there to, to, to beat two defenders anytime you can do that. Obviously you create a, uh, a numbers advantage because he's just defeated two players and is drawing a third to defend him. Yep. And usually when you do that, that's just like basketball. You draw the defenders, you got somebody open. That's right. In that 
case, just like in basketball, it's wise to foul him. <laughs> so again, Javier Gomez with a free kick from the left side of the box. That's six Lobos over on the far post. Chip into the box, well played. Oh, Lobo score goal! So Javier Gomez gets it to the corner, and the score... with the score and the kick. You know the defenders love that, right? So yep. I was like, score by no obstruction there, but yep. it would have resulted in an indirect kick in the box. The referees are usually very hesitant to give that kind of kind of call. So again, the Denver Pioneer goalie will clear this thing out. As it, in, in games where the teams are so familiar with each other, like these two conference foes here, uh, goals off of restarts are very, very important and probably the most common way of scoring. Um, we've had one off of a corner kick for the Pioneers and one off of a free kick for the Lobos playing true to form. Um, restart goals are very, very important when the, player, the teams know each other so well. So again, the Denver Pioneers on the attack, they send the ball. And, and probably the most common way of scoring. Um, we've had one off of a corner kick for the Pioneers and one off of a free kick for the Lobos playing true to form. Um, restart goals are very, very important when the, player, the teams know each other so well. So again, the Denver Pioneers on the attack. They send the ball out of bounds on the right side. Goes back over to the Lobos and they will take control there. Pat get out again as they do trying to in the backfield, they got the defenders working it. Carson Bildwinger looking to the right side. Travis Campbell with it now up the right side. And he goes all the way down here to Smith. And Smith in the middle of the field controlling it with some footwork. He's got a shot on it right into the middle of the field. Well done by the goalie. Didn't lose track of the ball. That's good tough in that player is coming across the across the field and then hits it back to the other side for the goalkeeper to keep his concentration and be in the right position. The keeper was excellently placed that time. So now the Lobos playing the midfield very nicely. Bouncing that up to a player player. You can see that Blake Smith started out on the left side. Now he's playing central in the midfield. Again, the Lobos interchanging uh, positions, trying to confuse the defense, moving their players around. So the Lobos clear it out again to the defenders. They'll back it all the way out to Carlson Midwinger. He has Javier on the right side and he has Travis Campbell on the right side. And they decide to go up the right side with Michael Green and into the feet of the Lobos. Here comes to Javier Gomez on the left side. They'll back it out to Carlson again, Carson. And Carson all the way to the other end of Travis Campbell again. I was doing a good job of they're back to their possession game. They with the score being equaled up, sort of like being back 0-0 to start the game. Both teams going back to their strengths. Lobos possessing, looking for long diagonal penetrating balls. Pioneers content to absorb it and wait for a counter-attacking opportunity. So now the Denver Pioneers with the ball right now. A little bit of dribbling going on. They'll back it all the way out to the defenders. And they'll take it from there. They have a guy open up on the right side. Didn't get it to him. And then they go all the way to the left side. And he kicks it out of bounds is Drew Becky. And Drew sends it out of there and goes over to the Lobos. Lawrence Robaldo. And back into Green. Green has it with him right now. And he gets it going this way. So here well comes the Lobo on attack. There. Nice. Switch to the right. Cross. Corner kick. So corner kick for the Lobos. And this will be another scoring opportunity for the New Mexico Lobos as they have scored once. It's tied one to one. We're 38 minutes into the first half of play. Number 13, Lawrence Robaldo, another uh, Albuquerque player out of Albuquerque. So Lawrence Robaldo will get it in from the corner. Here he comes. Nice kick just out of there. And then it's saved by the Denver Pioneers in Keegan Smith and Keegan. Wants a call here. He doesn't get.
get it and it goes back over to the Lobos. So Keegan Smith wanted the call, doesn't get it, back to the Lobos. And that's the corner kick opportunities are great counter-attacking opportunities. You know, we're all going to have everybody pressed up except two players. And you can see the Pioneers try and take advantage of that by the quick break. So again, the Lobos clear it after the defenders. They go up the right side again. And Levy Rossi, Levy Rossi will clear all the way back into Kyle Venter. And then Kyle will go up the right side, give it off into the feet of... There's Vetter again with it. He's going to bounce it. I mean, kick it way downfield. And that's a little bit too much for the Lobos. I think those passes are a little bit too ambitious from this deep in the field. I think the Lobos need to be a little bit more patient, get it closer to the midfield before they, they play that long diagonal ball. It'll be a lot, a lot more accurate pass. So with the New Mexico Lobos still trying to attack the ball as Green gets it now, and then he clears it back out to... Travis and Travis back to Green. Green at the center field. He'll kick it over here. They got Javier Gomez on the left wing. Don't find him. Go to the center of the nice field. Dummy. He let the ball roll between his feet. And there's Devin up in the middle. Shot by Michael Green. And Michael Green a little off. Passes the target. So 39 minutes, actually 40 minutes in. We got a couple of minutes grace period and Explain that grace period to me, Jay. Well, in soccer, there's very few uh, definite situations. <laughs> Everything's a bit of a gray area, including the time. Yeah, college is a little different. In college, the uh, time will be kept on the scoreboard. The time will stop for start um, there. But in every other aspect of uh, soccer, time will be kept on the field by the referee, and he can give extra time for injuries, goal celebrations, etc. So uh, many, many times you're watching a match, and nobody has any clue when it's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And usually the Lobos Division One go 45 minutes. That's right. Uh, today we don't know if that is the case. We're yeah, hoping I'm, it will I'm be. Sure, it will be. It's a, an official um, spring season match. The Lobos are all Division One teams are allowed ten games in the spring, and they try and make the most out of that in preparation for the next fall. So apparently, we will be going 45 minutes per half today, and another corner kick for the Lobos. There's a header just out of there, but the Lobos retain it. He'll back it out to Javier Gomez. Javier will send it back in again. Another header, and nothing there for Travis Campbell off the head. Well done, Javier has had an excellent game. He had the assist on the on the goal, and that was an excellent cross. Um, head high, allowing his player to get on the end of that. He just couldn't get it on the target, but he did the right thing. He shot it to the far post. He was trying to go to the near post. But it was a great opportunity. So the Lobos will get it here. They go up the right side. A nice pass. And Travis. And he gets it over the right side. In the middle of the field. And it's kicked away. And then out of bounds it goes. Off the Denver Pioneers. Back to the Lobos. With the conditions the way they are. With the wind being as strong as it is. Although down on the field the flags don't look like they're blowing as hard. So it may not be as bad on the surface. But it's a good idea to keep the ball on the ground a lot more. This is a lot less variability because of the wind. <laughs> yeah. So the Lobos again back to their defenders and they back it all the way up. They got Javier Gomez on the right side. They decide to keep it in the backfield right, try to draw the defense. And again, there's the kick. To Mr. Green. Green will get it. Plays it well. He sends it to the right side to Javier. And then they got Smith up front. He's doing some work. Sends it back outside. And here comes the Lobos on the attack. Nice work there on the inside. Bouncing the ball. Nicely leaving Rossi. Green with a shot up front. There's a header. Nope. Just missed it. And Carson Bollinger just missed the header.
Denver Pioneers will get it back here as let's see what happens here. And again, they, kicked out of bounds. They, the Pioneers really haven't shown a preference on one attacking one side of the field or the other. They, they really have not played the ball much into the attacking third. Their only um, opportunities have come off of uh, restarts. So always have to be very careful with their fouls, not give them an opportunity to um, start from a dead ball situation here. So the Lobos with the steal and the attack, they got Devin up front. Will he be able to get there? And he does not get there as quickly as we thought he would. And the Denver Pioneers clear it out. And this time it'll go all the way back. And the flag has risen. That's right, it was offside here. They, in, uh, the player cannot put himself back onside. If when the ball is kicked, if he's in an offside position, then he's offside. He can't get back onside during the course of that play. So um, proper call by the official there. So again, a deep kick for the Lobos and the Pioneers will retain possession as it goes out of bounds yeah. off the Lobos. Look like a little push when the flag, when the assistant referee twirls his flag, that means a foul rather than out of play. So the Pioneers start with the re-kick, with the restart. So the restart for the Denver Pioneers, they'll take it up the left side and the Lobos will clear it. And that time, that time the, low, the goalkeeper can handle it because the ball is played off the head, it was passed off the head of the defender instead of off the foot. Any ball off the foot cannot be handled by the goalkeeper. Any other body part, chest, head, um, can be uh, there. The pass can be handled by the goalkeeper. And that's the end of the pier, the the half as the Lobos won and the Denver Pioneers won. And Jake, what a game thus far! Yeah, it's been great. It's uh, it's what you.